Hello there everyone, it's Jennifer McGuire and I appreciate you stopping by for another video today. Now in this video I'm going to show you how to do a very simple technique. It's so simple in fact that I'm going to create a set of note cards with this technique and it is doing partial die cutting to create a unique border. Another great thing about these cards is there aren't many products needed for it. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to use my T-ruler and a pencil to draw a line on a piece of four and a quarter by five and a half inch Nina White cardstock. Any cardstock would work here. I have my Big Shot and I have taped my platform and the bottom cutting plate together. This will just make this technique easier. You don't have to do this, but I want to keep those lined up perfectly on the edge. We're going to do partial die cutting, which is a fun technique and it really allows you to get more out of your dies. I have some micropore tape here, washi tape, any kind of little bits of tape will work here just to tape our paper in place. And I'm lining that pencil line up with the edge of the cutting plate. Now anything to the left of this line will get cut. Anything to the right of this line will hang off the plates and will not cut. So we're doing partial die cutting. I'm using this new Simon Says Stamp flower die. I think it's just gorgeous. And I am going to use it to do a partial die cut border. So I am only allowing half of it to get cut. So I'm just positioning it how I want it, put a little tape to hold it there, and only the part that is left of that pencil line will cut because the pressure is between the cutting plates only. So I'm going to run this through my machine, and then I will pull it out the other side, and you'll see that only part of that die has cut through the paper. This is a fantastic technique and a great way to kind of get more out of your dies, and I had never done it actually for a border before, but this really opens up the door to a lot of new card ideas. So you could just die cut this twice, just right next to each other, but I decided to kind of rotate my die just to change it up a little bit. So I'm actually running it through three times to get one border. So now I'm going to take that one off, and you can see that because I don't move my paper every time, it cuts up to the exact same point, that pencil line, every time. So the last time I'm just going to tape this down uh, to cover up this last little position over here. Uh, this is a fun technique for maybe like a large word die where you only let the bottom edge of the word die not cut through and then you have a fun word sitting along a border. Okay, so now we have all of our die cutting done and I could repeat this for other pieces. I actually did one of these cards and was so happy with it and how easy it was that I decided to go back and do the other two, which I'll show you later. Okay, so now I need to cut apart anything along the line that didn't cut. So anything that, any of the negative space that needs to be cut away. You could use a straight edge and a craft knife to do this, but I actually found it just as easy just to cut it by hand with the craft knife. If you do a straight edge, you just want to line it up with the pencil line you already have there. Super easy. I like the Tim Holtz craft knife because I find this just really cuts well, and it's safe because the blade can be tucked back in. Once I have it all cut through, I just go ahead and poke it with the craft knife to see if there's any areas where I didn't cut all the way through up to the edge. And it just helps with making it easier to pop these pieces out. So once I have gone through and they look like they're all popping through, I'm just going to flip this over and pull the pieces away from the back. I just found this was the easiest way to remove all the negative space away from the intricate border that we have kind of popping out here. I am so pleased with the intricate results you get from this. I know laser cut, die cut um, kind of cards are popular and stationary, so I love getting that look on my own from home. Now it's time to remove that pencil line by just erasing it away. And sometimes, by the way, when you do die cutting, you get like lines from your cutting plate when you do partial die cutting or from the edge of the dies. All I do to kind of remove those little like bumps is just rub it with my bone folder and it just takes it away and smooths it out. Now I felt like these two small flowers also needed a little hole in the center. Uh, you could totally skip this, but I wanted it to match the other flower, so I'm just using a tiny hole punch to add holes to that. And there we have our flower border done. I also wanted to add a little more to that bordered edge. I have this die set from Paper Smooches. I think it's just a fantastic, useful die set. Uh, some of them do faux stitching. This one does tiny little holes in a border. So I'm lining that up right against the edge of our die cut border. I'm going to run that through and this is going to just put a bunch of tiny holes along the edge. I think those little holes kind of match the holes in the center of the flower so I thought it was a fun finishing touch. Now I have some shimmer spritz here. This is this very subtle shimmer spray that I spray from about two and a half feet above my paper onto my note card. This is a piece of sea glass cardstock from Simon Says Stamp. I've cut it to a four and a half, I'm sorry, four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card. And I misted it about five times with that shimmer. 
Then I go ahead and heat set it. If you put too much, you can wipe some of it away with a cloth. But as you heat set this, it, you end up with a shimmer cardstock. And I love this. It's great for simple cards because it adds some interest. And check out that soft, soft shimmer. It's hard to see in the video, but here I'm going to show you up close after it's all done drying. Just love that shimmer. So this little bit of shimmer is going to peek out the top of our white floral border. Now it's time to create a foam piece to put behind this white piece so it pops up. I like to do this fun foam. This is like just the fun foam that you used to use as a kid for crafts. I like to use this instead of foam tape along um, large pieces that I want lifted up on my cards. So I've cut this piece to be slightly smaller than this white area. And I'm going to go ahead and glue this to the back of that. This fun foam isn't that thick, but it adds some nice dimension. You'll see here when I set this back down that it raises it up just slightly, and, but it gives it a nice, smooth, even lift from behind. Now for the tiny little flowers, I'm using some Cooltech clear, clear foam tape. And I'm just cutting tiny little pieces and putting this behind some of the petals. This clear tape is nice when you have tiny little areas like this because you don't see the tape from the sides. But you could also take mini glue dots and roll them up in your fingers and put little balls of that glue dot right behind these flowers. That's another way to get the same look. So now I'm going to go ahead and glue this onto the bottom of my card. By the way, you could just use foam tape on the bottom of that. You don't need to use that fun foam if you don't have it, but I really just love the results of it. It stands up nicer during uh, mailing. So now that I've got this glued to the bottom of my card, this is the point where I remembered I forgot to put a sentiment on here. So thankfully, we have a flat background behind this white piece, so I can easily go and add it now. I have this Simon Says stamp, uh, stamp set here with this sentiment that says, you're, you're amazing. I'm going to stamp that with Versamark ink, just a clear sticky ink. And then I'm going to add my favorite, favorite silver embossing powder. This is the Liquid Platinum from Ranger. This is kind of a warm silver, so it's not a bright silver. And I think it's perfect for these soft colors on this card. To prevent warping of my paper, I like to get my heat gun really good and hot before I bring it to the paper. This allows the heat embossing to melt faster and then you won't warp your paper as much. So now that I have that heat set, the card is done. I'm going to keep it that simple. I wish you could see the shimmer on the note card from behind. I, it really makes a big impact in real life. I also created some with some gray cardstock and some pink cardstock. And I'm going to create a set of 12 of these to give to my son's teacher for Christmas. I changed the sentiment so that there would be a mix of sentiments on the cards too. As always, the supplies that I use for these cards is listed below in my YouTube description, or you can just go over to my blog at jennifermaguireinc.com where I'll have much more information, including a giveaway. Thanks so much for stopping by, and I hope you visit again soon.